Hi, this is Joseph Tan here from GoodMonday.com. We are still working through the top 10 list of most threatening issues that face organization today. We've been working through these issues from bottoms up according to the list derived from authors Roger Connors and Tom Smith. Uh, starting at the bottom with program mitis, cross-functional strife, senior management development, poor performance, work and personal life balance, entitlement, misalignment, empowerment. And for this episode, we're going to focus on the matter of people development. Now, if you ask any organizational leaders, what is the most important asset of your company? The obvious answer is uh, not what, but who. Well, people. People are the most important asset in the organization. However, if you ask the question, what is it that causes you most frustration and stress in the organization? Strangely enough, the answer is also people. So people can be both an asset or liability. Well, depending on how we approach the developmental efforts. So here goes, what is people development from the right perspective? Well, people development is only the tip of the iceberg because for people development to be meaningful and engaging, there needs to be three fundamental areas that needs to be addressed before people development can be an event that is um, sustainable and something that hits home. Uh, we need to have three prior conditional uh, factors to be in place first before we look into people development. So what are these three factors? Right at the foundation is the factor of basic needs. If certain basic needs are not even met, you can talk until your face turn blue about people development and it will not be able to bring about the sustainable or transformational effect that you hope. According to Gallup, 50% of employees come to work not knowing what is expected of them, meaning I could be very busy at work, but I'm not really sure whether if what I do contributes to my boss's priorities, or rather my, my boss may not be very clear in communicating his expectation to me. So don't talk about development if expectations are not even clarified. Second element of basic needs, do I have the resources required to do a good job? Uh, meaning, do I have the equipment and information to do a good job? Most employees come to work wanting to do a good job, but do they have the resources, material and equ equipment to fulfill their job description? If not, people development doesn't also make sense. Beyond basic needs, every employee also have individual needs. For example, do I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day? According to Gallup, if an employee has an opportunity to do what he or she does best every day, he or she is six times more engaged. So if we don't provide an opportunity for employee to focus on their talent and strengths, people development is just mere rhetoric. Also, do we recognize and pay attention to what our employees do well in? Now, ev everybody uh, works hard, but it's very motivating if someone works hard and someone pays attention to what is being done. You know, the need for appreciation, it's a universal human need and it is the wise manager that learns to recognize and pay attention to the contribution of each of his or her employees. Now this is fundamental even before people development. Then there's this whole area of teamwork because although my basic needs are met and I know where I fit in as an individual and yet I need to work in a motivating environment and an environment where there is collaboration and where there is a focus on quality by every member of the team and I'm not alone in what I'm doing. So there need to be a sense that every team member is doing their fair share of the workload be because if there is an, a lopsided um, distribution of workload or there are some members of the team who are rewarded for doing less, then the sense of fairness 
uh, is not felt and this could very much affect work performance and doesn't bring any meaning and does not lend any weight to any further people development efforts as well. Also within the team environment, do my opinions really matter? One of the ways to inculcate teamwork is to make sure that everyone have a sense that he or she is being heard. When opinions are taken into consideration and employees' viewpoints are taken seriously, it produces an environment where there is motivation to contribute and to chip in and where buy-in and personal ownership takes place because opinions are heard and seriously considered. And when this environment is in place, people development makes sense. So as you can see here, people development really requires the right environment to be in place. Uh, people development only will have its greatest uh, maximum or optimized return if fundamentally we meet basic needs, we focus on the in individual our employee first as an individual and when we put in the elements where teamwork is encouraged. And when these three factors are in place, you have what we call an engaged work environment. So here's the principle, engagement needs to be in place before development. Without engagement, development is just a mere activity and event. But when engagement is in place, then there is motivation. And when motivation is in place, development then hits fertile soil. And when it hits fertile soil, the seed would grow. So if people development is an issue for your organization, first start off by asking yourself the fundamental question, is there engagement? Because without engagement, your development effort is going nowhere. Think about it. This is Joseph Tan here from goodmonday.com. Thanks for watching.